Hey guys, and welcome back for another episode of the Social Hour Podcast, a podcast for sewists by sewists. I'm your host, Ashley. And I'm your host, Bethany. And on this week's episode, we are talking about cutting machines, specifically Mm -hmm. die cutting machines and um, and how we can use them for sewing. So I'm excited to talk about this. (laughs) Yeah, well, the machines, they started out, I feel like, just with paper, but they have come a long way in the world of sewing. So we definitely want to talk about that. Yeah. But before we dive in, Ashley, how was your birthday? (laughs) Oh my goodness. Did you do something special for your 40th birthday? Well, my husband threw a surprise party for me, which I was not expecting at all. That's so sweet. Yeah. It was with the whole fam. Mm -hmm, Yeah. My side and his side came and uh, I had absolutely no idea. That's awesome. Yeah. That's and then really after... sweet. Have you ever had a surprise party before? Never, ever. And I never thought I would, <laughs> honestly. Okay. So I've always wanted a surprise party and I've never had one. Um, and I think I would, it, it would be like the most exciting thing ever to be surprised to have a party. But you were more <laughs> like, I need a moment to process this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's not for everybody is what I'm saying. Yeah, well, like, I kind of wanted to crawl into a hole and just hide when I walked in and saw everybody. And, and instead of feeling like thankful, I just felt like, oh, my God, you didn't have to do this, which is the wrong response. (laughs) (laughs) But I mean, I get it. Like, we're, we feel we instinctively feel bad when people other people do nice things for us. But we're willing to do it for them. But we it's hard for us to accept it in return so. yeah i'm a people pleaser and yeah. i'm just even as the party's going on and i'm seeing the presents and they're getting the cake and then just everything i'm like oh my god you didn't have to oh my god I, you why did you <laughs> and i but it was really sweet when you take a minute to go these people love me and i Apparently. deserve to be loved yeah. and i'm going to accept this love this is how they want to show their love and and for you so i think it's really sweet i know um and then on my birthday i went out with my sister and we went to a comedian um and i laughed so hard and <laughs> that that's my jam is going to comedian yeah. so and yeah. well that's awesome i'm mm-hmm. glad you had a good birthday yeah. and it's officially april now april 2nd yeah. so happy new year <laughs> It feels like it, man. Well, yeah, because like... now I got to do my taxes. Oh, girl, I did those back in February. Yeah, we have until the end of April. So we have to like, we have like two more weeks, right? So we have like mid April. But mm. um, you know what? We did them on Valentine's Day. Oh, how and, and I know that because Brett helps. Brett loves doing these. Um, He kind of geeks out over it. Okay, I know well. enough to to do them. I've been doing my taxes myself for many years, so I know enough to to do them well. Um, but he really enjoys doing them. I forget every. So it's he, like my first I one. logged in. I let him do it, and I was in my sewing room sewing while he was doing my taxes. <laughs> and then I, if he had questions, I was right there. If there's something I needed to review, and it was all good to go. Yeah. So that's how we spent our Valentines. I'm trying to think whether I want to do it before the girls trip or after, because it's a stressor for me. It's, it's like a trigger word that, Oh, so it's like, uh, I just need to get it done and then I can enjoy the girls trip or do I just say, screw it and enjoy the girls trip. And then I'll just worry about it when I get home. Yeah. I don't know yet. But I don't have like, I don't have all my information. Like I'm still waiting for Adam to like print out his T4 and all that crap. So in Canada, it's a little different than in the u.s but Mm. taxes are taxes and they're not fun for anyone um but i don't know i mean i won't have to pay this year so it's not like i you know if you don't pay then i would get it over with before the girls trip so you can just really you don't have that weighing over you Mm. which means you've got like this week and next week (laughs) yeah um because speaking of girls trip so me we haven't really mentioned it yet on the podcast but Mm. ashley and diana and i are meeting up in tampa florida in a couple of weeks to have a little girls beach trip just the three of us we're really excited i haven't seen ashley since last june i haven't seen diana since last june is it june or was it it was last june when we did the sewing yeah, retreat. yeah yeah 
Yeah. So Mm -hmm. yeah, it's been like what, nine months since I've seen you guys in person. So I'm excited. I feel like it's been longer. (laughs) It feels longer, but then also like, it also feels like that wasn't that long ago, but then this whole first quarter of this year has felt like ages. (laughs) Yeah. Right? Like, oh my gosh, what is it with this year? I feel like January was its own year, and then February and March just kind of creeped by. Like, March felt really long because I traveled quite a bit. Mm. And that always just makes you confused as to what day it is all the Mm. time. So, I don't know. I just, uh, I'm ready to get back into like a routine, but there's always more travel. I mean, I think I've traveled like every month, multiple times. Yeah. So, it just makes it hard to like have like a sense of reality. (laughs) sometimes i'm like what stability is too right yeah. like, you feel like you can't get into routines and stuff because it's always changing and yeah it's a struggle yeah. but it's worth it and i'm excited to see you guys and spend a week at the beach and we're not sewing no we're just i am bringing some crochet stuff though relaxing and doing whatever the heck we want and feeding <laughs> ourselves we're gonna eat a lot i just know <laughs> it yeah i've already got us teed up to go the all you can eat sushi place <laughs> And when I say all you can eat, y'all, it is so freaking good. It's so good. Um, but yeah, no. And our little condo, our little Airbnb is like one house behind the house on the beach. So we don't even have to cross the street. We literally just walk right. out and then hang a left and the beach is right there. I'm so excited. This is another thing of growth for me, too, because I drove down to Nashville for our last trip. But this time I'm flying by myself to florida so that'll be big girl stuff (laughs) (laughs) so proud of you (laughs) right like i have not gone anywhere so but i'm ever very confident and and bethany's gonna be like right right, waiting right when i get off so i'm not gonna be alone i actually um, like scheduled my flight so that my flight gets in the same time as yours so i can find you Mm -hmm. and it'll all be fine but have you ever flown alone never never I've, I we did a trip. I in, prefer it <laughs> in, in high school where we went up into a plane and then came back down. So that's pretty much the extent of me flying a lot. <laughs> wow. So how many like have you flown a lot with other people, or is are you just like more of like a driving? Yeah, like I've gone to the Dominican, Florida, okay. California. Okay. I just haven't had to, and and doing it by yourself really isn't that much different because I've already I'm already the one who like keeps track of the passports and all that stuff. Yeah, my cousin just traveled alone to Las Vegas, and he was you know his wife does all that stuff, so he was like I don't like this. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> well, that's the only thing that like he's like now he has to learn how to check in and stuff. But I already yeah. at least I know how to do all that stuff because that's yeah. what I've already done with yeah. my own family. So. And fun. even though you're in Canada, you're driving into the States and then flying. Right. So you're not having to do like the whole customs and international like mm-hmm. stuff. So so much that's easier. Good. Yeah. yeah. Since you're so close to the border, it makes sense. And it's probably cheaper too. So, so um, much cheaper. Pearson <laughs> airport in Toronto is the most expensive airport in all of Canada. So why the uh, heck would I want to fly out of it? There's no. Hamilton and that one's cheaper, but it's just touch and go. It's one of those airports that like, you know, you, you, you have to be good with leaving on a Wednesday, you know? Like, yeah. So, <laughs> so anyways, yeah. we're, we're excited. I'm excited for you to, I mean, I fly by myself all the time for work. Mm-hmm. I really, for me, I really enjoy flying alone because mm-hmm. it's like my downtime. So like going and like, it's my decompression time, knowing that I'm about to go into like a really hectic few long work days yeah or it's my decompression time of like i'm on the plane all i have to do is sit here i can crochet i can listen to my audiobook i can i'm not really a nap taker on planes but i have dozed off a few times because i'm so exhausted from my work trip or whatever i'm doing um and it's like my alone time where i don't have to talk to anybody yeah well it's like there you're being forced to sit and relax i know and that's hard (laughs) for me but i really do appreciate yeah that and these my flights like two hours so for mm-hmm. an hour and a half so it's not bad but um but yeah no i i really do enjoy i like to get to the airport early i like to walk around i like to get my starbucks or coffee or whatever I eat something sit yeah. and chill you know i love yeah. people watching love i like getting there watching. early just so that i can like the stress level stays yeah down and- yeah 
And I only have to be there two hours early because it's domestic. If I was mm-hmm. in Pearson, I'd have to be there three hours early and I'd have to leave an hour and a half before that. So it's yeah. like leaving five hours before your flight. <laughs> I want to do that. Yeah. So yeah. it only takes just, 40 I, minutes to get to Buffalo Airport. That's not bad. No. So I'm excited. We're going to see each other in a few weeks and mm-hmm. meet up. And Diana's going to drive down because she she's within driving distance. So she's going to drive down. So you and I have kind of like Wednesday to hang out before she drives down after work that day. And then we have like a long few days to hang out together. I'm really excited. Mm-hmm. I really needed a girl's trip. I'm glad yeah, we booked it. For sure. All right. So we're going to talk about cutting machines today. And then after we talk about cutting machines, obviously we'll have our sewing confession um, of the week. So remember, if you have a sewing confession, you can go to our website and submit your confession. They are anonymous. We do not know who submits what at all. Um, and we'll we'll might share yours here on an upcoming podcast. Excited to share this week's with you guys. But let's talk about cutting machines. So uh, when we think of cutting machines, what do you think of, Ashley? Cricket. Cricket. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, Like that's kind of like the, like people don't call them cutting machines. They just call them cricket machines, but there's so many different ones out there now. Mm -hmm. That whole crafting industry has really evolved a lot. And so we're going to kind of talk about that and, and ways that some of these machines could be a good addition to your sewing experience. Cause obviously we're sewists here, but, um, what, what is like a way that you've, used a cutting machine for like what is something that you've used one for i i had it like i got the first like cricket expression mm-hmm. so which was like 2000 and like seven or something um yeah eight 2008 or something like 2005 when it was released apparently. when the cartridges or something like that i still yeah. have them. yeah like, i was really heavy into paper crafts at the time mm-hmm. so that's typically what i used them for um until they came out with the maker that's for fabric yeah which i still because it has a rotary cutter oh it doesn't okay yeah that's why Mm. it's got a rotary cutter blade so like for cricket um i've been using cricket machines for or cutting machines for about 15 16 years since that one came out yeah and i've had just about every version in between i don't still have those um i purged them yeah (laughs) i just have the x which one is it the uh air two i have that one yeah the explore Mm -hmm. air two Mm -hmm. um so i have the joy Mm. i have the explore air two and then i have the maker um and so i have those three um i also have the starcraft solo which is a 16 inch cutting machine Mm. And then obviously I have the new 24 inch Singer Memento cutting machine that just came out last month. Yeah. Um, So I have a room full of cutting machines and all of the accessories. And I love, I love playing with this stuff. And I'll tell you that we're going to talk about different ways that you can use these machines. But for me, it's just amplifying and making it's amplifying my sewing that I'm already doing or any of my crafting. Um, but it also like, it just, it gives, it makes my process easier. So if I wanted to cut out an applique, I mean, sure I could do it by hand, but who wants to do that? Especially if it's a detailed applique, I probably won't even do a detailed applique if I didn't have a cutting yeah. machine. I'll just do so to, yeah. So to be able to cut out detailed things and fabric or be able to add vinyl to a fabric project or to, be able to just make custom stickers are fun. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, there's just so many different things you can do. Making cards. My mom loves making cards. And so she has a cutting machine to do cards. That's kind of why I bought the Joy was just because it's a really good, like, card making machine. Mm-hmm. It's all I've ever really used it for. Um, it's not my favorite. <laughs> um, but I think they've kind of improved it since the first one came out. Mm-hmm. Um, but I still have it. It's it's fine. Wasn't um, that the first one that went like matless? Like the first have, one from Cricut. Yeah, they have. Um, it was like they're t- dipping their toe into that. Like mm-hmm. they have their proprietary vinyl. So any of their right. matless, like any of their machines that will cut matless, it will only cut matless with their proprietary vinyl. So you have to use their Cricut. Oh, smart, they call it their smart vinyl. Um, and so again, you know, it's just so it kind of limits you. 
Do they have, is there a mat with the joy though? Yeah, there's a mat with the joy. Oh, okay. so um, and they have a not... special mat just for card cutting. So you can buy pre-made cards and then it'll cut out the front. It'll write on the oh, inside. No. It'll do all those things. Um, and I've, I've bought those and those kits and it makes making a card like really easy. Mm. Um, and they have a ton of designs in their software to, to utilize with that. So they have, they have definitely dominated the cutting machine industry for, because they're the OGs, right? But, mm -hmm. but when we talk about that, we talk about like where it started with like the original cutting machine and you had the cartridges and you had to buy the cartridges. And those are the only things on that cartridge. You couldn't change them. And that's what you saw is what you got. And you think of that and then you think of where they're at now with like a 24 inch venture machine. They've got a, the 12 inch cutting makers. They've got the 12 inch airs. They've got the, the four and eight inch joys. Like they've got a whole collection now and they're all computerized. They're, they've got their own proprietary software design space. And you just like, it's taken them 15 plus years to get to that point. So it's been an evolution and mm -hmm. a lot of us have been along on that ride for the whole time. Yeah. Um, and so it's, it's kind of interesting to see how much that industry has grown in the last 15 years. And, um, and then you see other brands trying to come into that industry now, having not done all of that and, um, and gone through all of that. And, um, you know, there's, there's always room for like growth. I think all of this stuff is going to continue to get better, smarter, easier, more advanced, um, techniques. And we're going to always see this kind of, I mean, that's what happens with technology, right? It's going to keep yeah. evolving. I just feel like if a, if a brand is going to in, insert themselves into this field, like they really need to stand out because yeah. everybody's, Done, been there done that and you really need to come in like with something amazing yeah <laughs> you know you can't just be I like agree. all the rest <laughs> i agree so there's different types of cutting machines there's just regular die cutting machines mm -hmm. uh, but then there's also like cutting machines that offer like a rotary blade like the maker three the new memento those are ones that have a rotary blade um that'll work with their machines so you can get like the fabric cutting side of it and mm -hmm. then there's like the hand crank cutters again with the die press these are cartridges or die presses and you hand crank and so we have a few that we'll mention um but we kind of want to talk about like features and capabilities so why would a sewist want a cutting machine um for me like i said to be able to cut out applique or letters is really nice um to be able to embellish a project that I've already sewn up is really mm -hmm. nice. Um, but I think of like bag makers. So, you know, I've gotten into bag mm -hmm. making, Ashley, and a lot of those bag making patterns come with cut files, like SVG yeah. cut files. So to be able to load my vinyl or faux leather or whatever, I'm, I'm going to sew my bag with onto my mat and have the machine cut out my bag pattern pieces for me with like perfect precision. precision. Yeah. I mean, hello, yes. <laughs> yeah, and there's some there's some wallet patterns that have like yeah. the card slots like perfectly. You know, when you just have a line and you have those little circles on the side and yeah. they're just like all in a row and you mm -hmm. wouldn't be able to do that with you couldn't no. cut it out with your hands, no way. Yeah, no. And so that um for me is like one of the reasons why I love having a cutting machine mm -hmm. that can and again with a rotary blade that can cut through those materials and give me that precision. And I love when a bag pattern includes SVG cut files. Mm -hmm. For I sure. Love that. Um, so I feel like there's a lot, like when I had my bandana business for my little, my biscuit bell boutique, um, I would offer personalized bandanas by adding heat transfer vinyl to mm -hmm. one of the bandanas so someone could order a bandana and add an embellishment of having their dog's name or whatever saying they wanted on the bandana um and so that was always fun to do those custom orders and then i also used my cutting machine to cut out my hair bow pattern so i oh. made a hair bow pattern in the software and my machine would cut out all of the hair bow pieces so all i had to do was sew them together because it's like small intricate circles and like it was I was like I'm not cutting out if I had to cut all that out I would not have done it yeah exactly no like so I feel like if you're you know wanting to add something to make the crafting experience 
faster, more efficient, more accurate, more enjoyable, more, I mean, save your easier. risk too. Yeah. Like, but if you're <laughs> also running like a small business and you're making a lot of the same thing, like those hair bows I was making, mm -hmm. or if you do earrings, like I love cutting cork on a cutting machine, or if you mm -hmm. want to make bags and you want to just expedite the process of like cutting out the bag pieces so you can get to the sewing part faster that's the fun mm -hmm. part that we really enjoy right but the the cutting part can actually be really fun and enjoyable too and so for me i i just i see it as being an additional tool in my sewing room to amplify my experience and my crafting i like mixing different mediums mm -hmm, for sure so, so yeah. one other like we were just talking about bag makers i feel like quilters could really benefit Oh my gosh, yeah. This so is huge I know this is I know this is like a little taboo though. There's quilters who love cutting their fabric. Oh. They love the process of cutting all the pieces using mm. their rulers and their rotary cutters and their masts and the, you know, they've got all these fun fancy rulers which are really fun. Um and I get it. But at the same time I don't because I really don't enjoy cutting all the pieces. <laughs> I, and, and when I go to do it, sometimes I mess up or it slides and they're not cut perfectly. Oh, yes, yes. And it just takes so much time that it's like, I don't even want to start a quilt because I don't want to cut all those dang pieces. Well, so, don't you have a quilt and that you, like you have all the pieces and then you have to cut out like what a thousand or something pieces. Like how daunting is that? I have Why that. would I want to do that? I have a kit. I have a yeah. kit. I bought the kit. With all the fabric. So I eliminated the process of picking the fabric. Right. I let them pick the fabrics mm -hmm. and I bought the kit. Mm -hmm. But then I found out that the pattern is like a thousand pieces. Yeah. That I was going to have to cut out of all of this fabric. Are you flipping? So it just on? makes it like seem very uh, not overwhelming. Doing it. Not doing it. I bought a kit. And so unless someone else wants to come cut all these dang pieces out, <laughs> I'm not doing it. But with a cutting machine i could go that route you could and so you know it's What's just a quicker? matter that's the huh? that's the other debate though it's what would be quicker well it depends on your machine i think i think with my singer momento it would actually be really quick mm -hmm. um and we can get into the reasons why but i honestly it's just because of the size of the machine Mm. and the fact that I could do really big mats and they have preset quilting settings mm -hmm. like shapes and stuff. So it would fill the whole mat. Yeah. And really prevent me from wasting fabric. So I don't know. I just, there's definitely certain, but again, we're going to kind of talk about all the different machines on the market. Um, and you guys can decide like which one might be the best fit for you. I'm not here to, push you in one direction or the other mm -hmm. but we're just here to have a conversation about cutting machines because i feel like there's a lot of people I feel, I feel like there's kind of two different types of people actually i feel like there's people who started with sewing and are just now dabbling into a cutting machine or they want to get into a cutting machine but they're not sure how it would fit in with their current craft of sewing and then the flip side of that is you have people who have always embraced cutting machines along either before they got into sewing or along with their sewing and they are applying it to their sewing, but maybe not as much as they could be. Mm -hmm. So, and then you have people who are just only use cutting machines. They, they're not sewers. Maybe they're just crafters that enjoy listening to our podcast and they want to get into sewing and that they're, that's their perspective. So maybe there's like kind of three different perspectives here. Mm -hmm. um, but you, I feel like there's a place for a cutting machine for anyone, truly. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot of ways to like create your appliques, your embellishments, your quilt pieces, your quilt blocks, um, anything that's repetitive, like cutting out a bunch of little cork earrings, you know, or a bunch of little vinyl designs. Or if you're a teacher and you have a whole classroom of names you need to cut out to <laughs> label their cubbies with like, you know, um, uh, it's removable vinyl. So it's just a temporary vinyl that you can, it's like a sticker you can put on there and they have their cubbies labeled or their desk labeled or wherever. Um, you can use it for cutting out pattern pieces. So not just for bag makers, but like doll makers, like mm -hmm. their clothes, um, uh, smaller patterns, um, even some kids clothes, puppy clothes. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. There's so many different things that you can use to cut patterns out with um, in this way. So I think there's a lot of like creativity that can mm -hmm. come from having a cutting machine, but there is a, le a learning curve, right? Yeah. 
and um, learning the different materials. I remember when I first started with um, like vinyl um, and I'm talking like either adhesive vinyl or heat transfer vinyl. I knew heat transfer would go on material like a, a shirt or a bag mm -hmm. or something and that adhesive vinyl would go on like something that's like a harder surface or plastic or glass or wood or whatever. Um, it's more of like a sticker. Yeah. Um, so, but when you look at the two vinyls next to each other and you don't know which is which, it can be a little confusing. So when I first started out, the adhesive vinyl has like a paper backing mm -hmm. and I would write like adhesive on the back of them or put an A or something because it took me a while of seeing all the different materials to be able to identify, learn to how to identify them mm -hmm. by just looking at them. Now I can look at them and go, oh, I know exactly what that is or which one's that or, you know, and I can even dive in deeper to like specific types. It gets, it gets even more detailed than just those two. Mm -hmm. um, so with that, I, I feel like there's a bit of a learning curve on materials, the different types of materials and also the different types of like things you can do on the machines. It can be a little overwhelming. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I know. And because we started so early, we thankfully kind of evolved we, with the brand yeah. and everything that was introduced, we kind of yeah. was introduced to. So to be like never in that world, it's... it's I mean, I can understand how, like if I step back and, and picture myself trying to jump into this now, yeah. having no experience before, how it could definitely be overwhelming. Mm -hmm. Like just going down the aisle at the craft store with all of this stuff. Sometimes it's multiple aisles. It's a lot. I remember one time I was at Michael's and they, um, I was looking at all the different vinyls and there was this lady standing there and she just had a deer in the headlights look on her face. <laughs> and I just was standing there and I was just like, I don't, I don't want to interject and I don't yeah. want to assume, but she was just like so confused. Like, where you do could I just start? tell that like, she was about to give up, but she really needed to get whatever she was looking for. And I'm like in there with confidence, like I need this, I need this, oh this too. Like I could use more of that. I had a list of stuff on my phone that I needed. And she finally looks at me, and I look at her, and we catch each other's eyes, and I go, "Can I help you?" <laughs> Yeah. And I meant that in the nicest way. And I don't work there. Yeah, she yeah. knows that. Um, and she's like, do you mind? I'm so overwhelmed. And I was like, I don't. She's like, you just seem like you know exactly what you're grabbing. And I'm like, I do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I said, I said, and I'm, I'm happy to help you because I, this whole wall of vinyl rolls hanging here yeah. is a lot to take in. Mm -hmm. And it would be like someone walking into their first quilt shop and seeing all the bolts of fabric and trying to understand the differences. You know, I, it, it's overwhelming. And so we talked about a project and she had just gotten a, a cutting machine. Like I think she had just gotten a cricket. So she was wanting to make something specific, I think, for one of her kids birthdays you know that you start wanting to do like some of the party favors or yeah. the decorations or those kind of things and I was like okay well let's or matching shirts or something I can't remember exactly what it was it's been so long but I was like okay well let's look at this and then this is the kind of vinyl you need and like and then I said it's all in this section and so then she was able to narrow it down to the find the color right. she wanted you know but right. she's like well I like this color and I was like well that's the wrong kind of vinyl so right. we're going to look for that color over here. So let's bring it with us and we'll kind of color match if we can, <laughs> you know, but it was, it was, I mean, I probably spent half an hour with her helping her get situated. And, um, this is, this was before I ever like had YouTube or anything, but I kind of shared some of my favorite people that I followed to like help her. There's so mm. many tutorials on YouTube and everything. So I hope she made what she was trying to make. I hope she had success. Well, I have no idea. You definitely like, saved her a trip back to, the, the store that's for sure or wasting material because once yeah. you open it and cut it you can't return it right so um and but at the same time like it's all a learning process and um so anyways if you see someone yeah in the, in the craft store feeling a little overwhelmed don't hesitate to offer help or it, your advice uh, i think people are hesitant because they don't want to assume um, but there's been so many times where, um, I've been in the aisle with the sewing machines and someone's looking, you know, and they're like, I don't, 
don't know the differences. And I'm like, well, I can help you if you don't, if you don't mind my help. And they're like, oh, I would love it. They're usually so appreciative and so, yeah. but they just don't want to bother you. But you're like, I really like, if it's something you care about and you know a lot about, it can't hurt, you know? And I always kind of say like, you need to decide what's right for you, but here's the differences. And from looking at a box, it's really hard to tell that. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, those are the kind of things that I feel like if you have an opportunity to help a fellow crafter get their journey started with something new and it's something you know a lot about, please mm -hmm. offer the help, offer the help. Yeah. And you can't necessarily rely on the staff because they might not know. No. Well, right. and they're not experts on all the different crafts in the no, store. No, they're not. No. You know? Mm -hmm. Um, and so they're they're not paid to be that. <laughs> Let's be honest. No. It's retail. Um, so when someone comes in and you're on the same aisle and you know, but again, if you see someone who clearly a note has been down that aisle a few many times before you and you're feeling a little overwhelmed don't don't hesitate to ask them for help if they don't want to help yeah. they don't want to help right mm -hmm. but it, it, don't be afraid to ask for help if from a fellow crafter all right so let's talk about some of the different machines that are on the market and kind of go through um like kind of what each one is yeah. does that make sense mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i mean we talked about the crickets so let's talk about, there's the maker the explore error and the joy the mm -hmm. joy is like the smallest one that's like a four inch but then they just came out with i think with like an eight inch like a joy plus or something oh really I don't know. yeah I it's a yet. little bit wider but it's still that one of the smaller cutting machines um still really geared towards like small projects crafting I originally got the joy when it first came out because I wanted to take it with me to my vendor shows mm. to be able to customize bandanas right there on the spot. Mm. It didn't really work very well for that. <laughs> I know. And it, but that was the first joy. Right. Maybe so now. It, it might, it just really struggled with being at a vendor show. I don't know what it was. I don't know. Huh. Maybe it was oh, just well. mine. Um, but I, I do enjoy using it for cards, like the little, the little sleeve with the cut, like it's a special mm -hmm. mat that has a sleeve to open the, it's really not, I do That's enjoy cool. that. Um, so the Explore Air is great for card. It's a 12 inch. It's a card stock, um, mm -hmm. vinyl. It will do print then cut, which is like making stickers. Mm -hmm. Um, it'll do a lot of that. It does. It is. And then there's the maker. Uh, it's also a 12 inch cutting machine. And the biggest difference between the Explore Air and the maker is the rotary blade. Yeah. So the Explore Air does not come with a rotary blade. So if cutting fabric is really important to you, yes, you can cut fabric on the Explore Air, but it has to be like bonded. So it's already got to have some sort of like interfacing or a bond, like a heat and bond attached to it or something. Mm. It can't just be straight fabric. It does not do well with that um, because it doesn't have a rotary blade. The maker has a rotary blade, so it doesn't have to be bonded fabric. It can just be straight quilting cotton or faux leather or whatever, and it'll cut it beautifully. And it does a pretty good job, but it's also a 12 inch cutting machine. So you have to use like the 12 by 12 mats mm -hmm. uh, or the 12 by 24 inch mats or something like that. And I think a maker um, is the only one that can do like thin wood, right? Um, it it can with they have a like a deep blade yeah. like a deep knife like a knife blade um and it takes a lot of passes and honestly i've never oh, really, really done it because it takes a long like it's not just a one pass and done mm. it's a lot yeah. yeah it's a lot and i have a glow forge now so i kind of just if i'm going to cut wood and laser lasers the way to go mm -hmm. um it would i feel like it would be really tough and this is like that really thin like boss of both boss of wood or whatever it's like right i just it's not a material i really craft with so not my jam mm -hmm. um but it people do it people use it um but then the cricket is i feel like okay so we've been talking about the cutting machines but the other component of that is the software Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that, um, understanding the software that comes with the machine is important when deciding which cutting machine to get. So Cricut comes with what's called design space. Originally it was a web-based platform. You log into the website. Um, but then it grew so much that they made it like an app base. So there's an app for the, like your desktop computer. And then there's also like an app for your tablet or, um, 
mobile phone. Um, and so I will say that the, the app for your tablet or mobile phone doesn't have all of the features that the web, like the computer based mm -hmm. app does. Um, and that's just because of its design capabilities for that platform. So, um, but you can put the app on any of those. Uh, but you can do it on the computer yeah. and then upload it onto the, or like you can just then access yeah. that image on yeah. your tablet so that you can go ahead and cut it out kind of thing. But it's a Bluetooth. These are Bluetooth enabled machines. So, I mean, you can send the right. design straight from your computer to the machine. It's not like it has to be hardwired in. Yeah, uh, I personally hardwire my my Cricut machines in because the Bluetooth t connection doesn't always yeah. stay. Sometimes even it doesn't sitting work. Sitting right next to my computer, and nothing's worse than losing the connection mid cut. Yeah, right. <laughs> nothing's worse. Um. So, and I've had that happen quite a few times. So, I actually, just hardwire because I sit it on the desk right next to my computer, anyways. Yeah. Um. But that's just that. Uh, why not? Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, so that's Cricut. Um, obviously, uh, a lot of people have heard about the Silhouette, the like Cameo. Yes. Uh, Silhouette's another popular uh, brand. Um, when they have a software called Silhouette Studio, this is also a 12-inch cutting machine. Um, I'm, let me take a step back real quick. With the Cricut Design Space, it is a free software that comes with the, like, you just download the app, and it's a free app right mm -hmm. but they have an optional subscription to get access to like pre-designed projects um fonts additional fonts additional images and graphics and even some features like design features um so it's like i think 10 bucks a month or something like that don't quote me on that but um having the subscription gives you access to more within their software, like their library of projects and everything else. Um, some people choose to use that feature and some people choose to create their own stuff and import it or get it, purchase designs from Etsy and import it. And you can still do that. The software itself is free. The subscription is the bonus, right? right. Um, so with Silhouette, um, their Silhouette Studio, I've heard wonderful things about their software. I've actually personally never used it. Me either. Um, but there's a lot of people that use the Silhouette software to design cut files. Oh. and Because you can export the, the SVGs from the software. And then um. they'll upload it to the design space to cut it on their crickets. Oh, no way. <laughs> Yeah, or their whatever cutting machine they have, because yeah, yeah. you cannot so export good. you cannot export your designs from Design Space. That is a big uh, thing that a lot of people have had issues with over the years. Is you can design stuff in Design Space, and it's very user friendly software, um, but you can't export your designs. Mm, so, so I prefer to design in uh, Illustrator. And Illustrator, then bring it into yeah. my design space. Yeah, but I, learning I Illustrator is better. a big undertaking. Yeah, and... so if you already know, like I do, then it's like it's easier. Yeah. But yeah, not then. Um, so for someone starting out, like Design Space, that's kind of one of the things where you can't export your designs. Yeah, that sucks. Um, and and let me kind of explain why that is. Um, they have a subscription with all these preloaded designs and projects and fonts and everything. So if you were to use those sure. from the subscription, you can't export those and share I them. That. So that's the reason why people are always like, I don't understand why I can't. And right. that's why, uh, because they're protecting the, the content that the subscribers are paying for. Mm hmm. And that just applies to everybody across the board with the export. So Silhouette Cameo, you do have um, the ability to export your designs. And they do have tiered subscription plans, but they're tiered. So there's like, depending on what you pay, like what you pay each month determines how much access or credits you mm -hmm. get. They kind of go off of a credit-based system, which is a little different. Um, so there's that one. Then... Um, Another uh, one that just came out is the Singer Momento. This is a 24-inch cutting machine, and this one also has rotary blade. Mm -hmm. um, 
So this means the difference between a 12 inch and a 24 inch is literally 12 inches. So when we say 12 inch cutting machine, that's how wide the cutting space is. So when I say mm -hmm. 24 inch cutting machine, it's a two foot wide cutting it's space. It's so big. It's a big machine. Yeah. Um, and, uh, so you need the, the space for it too, right? You so do like, need the space for it. It's, it's heavy. It is it's a heavy machine. So it's not one that like, like my, my cricket machines, my Starcraft solos, like I have those sitting on a shelf, like there's right. three shelves on the wall Yeah, and they each have their own shelf. And when I want to use one, I can just pull one down. Right. Well, mm -hmm. with the memento, it's more of like a, you set it and forget it kind of thing. Like it's, you don't want to move it around a lot cause it's heavy. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and it'll break off your wall shelf. <laughs> <laughs> I would not put it on my wall shelf. No. Um, because I don't think those are in studs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so it would, and it's wider than my wall space is right there anyways. But um, it's wider, it's wider than my shelves are actually. So um, anyways, it's a big machine. It can do matless with vinyl uh, and it's not proprietary vinyl. It's any vinyl. Uh, as long as the vinyl it has a backing, so like adhesive vinyl has that paper backing, heat transfer vinyl has that clear backing. So as long as it has a backing, you can cut matless with the Memento. Um, it does have a software called the MySonet crafting software. So Singer has a MySonet embroidery software. So they just mm -hmm. kind of took that platform and made a crafting version. And so they do have tiered subscriptions, but the software itself is free. But again, tiered subscriptions get you access to projects and additional fonts and very similar setup to like the Cricut design space in that regard. Um, so it is a bigger machine. That's the only one that they have right now is the 24 inch. Mm -hmm. uh, it does include the rotary cutter in the box. It's not something you have to purchase separately, which is the case a lot of times for other machines that have a rotary cutter. Um, they do sell like accessories, like the 24 by 24 inch mat, which is really nice. It's like one of the biggest mats I've ever seen. It's huge. It's two feet yeah. by two feet. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, you can fill a whole mat with fabric and tell it to cut. Uh, it'll, it'll fill the mat. So you can tell it to put as many two and a half inch squares on the mat. And on a 24 inch mat, it'll cut 80 of those. Wow. So if you're cutting a lot of pieces for a quilt, it's pretty mm. great. I'm not going to lie. Um, so that's the Singer Memento. And then um, the Brother Scan and Cut uh, is very, it's a 12 inch cutting machine. It's very, also very much geared towards fabric, mm -hmm. applique, quilting, um, but can do vinyl and, can, and cardstock and stuff too. It has a free software called Canvas Workspace. Um, and so that's my brother. Um, and then the Starcraft solo, this is a Starcraft is a brand of, um, vinyl and, mm -hmm. uh, heat presses and all of that. And they have dipped their toe into the cu cutting machine. The Starcraft solo came out, I want to say in October of 2021. Hmm. And I know that because I had it right before it launched and I s went and did content for it way back then. Um, it is a 16 inch cutting machine. That's um, nice. It's the first one that I have had that had like the, the pinch wheels that like feed, like that feed the mat or material into the machine. The mm -hmm. pinch wheels are, you can move them. Mm -hmm. And they were adjustable. The, the Memento has adjustable um, pinch wheels too. But the Starcraft Solo was the first one I ever had that had that. And oh. it would, could cut matless. Um, but it has a software called Create Software. And it's a, it comes with the machine for free. Or you can purchase the software, like a one-time fee, um, separately. This, is, this software is kind of what I would consider like a software specific to svg cutting like design mm -hmm. but it's kind of at the caliber of like an illustrator there's a or like illustrator meets photoshop kind of like advanced tech like so i really like the create software but it's a learning curve mm -hmm. and i would create designs in the create software export it 
And then I would upload it into my other software to cut it on my Cricut or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, So, but that's because I want it, like if you're going to run a business, right? And you want to, maybe you want to make your own digital downloads, like you're free, like, or not free, but um, you're like on Etsy, you can purchase SVG files. Well, people who make those need to be able to export them out of their software. So like the create software is a great software to do that, to create, a cut file and SVG and then make it a digital download that you sell over and over and over again on Etsy. Um, So I really like the create software and it's a one-time purchase Hmm. and, or, or it comes with the machine. Right. So, but you don't have to have the machine. Yeah. That's software. Yeah. I like that option. Yeah. Yeah. It's a really, it's a, it is a bit of a learning curve, but it's pretty Good. thorough software. Um, hmm. Which ones have we not talked about yet? So the AccuQuilt Go. Yeah. AccuQuilt well, is specifically for quilting, and it actually has, like, die cut presses. Yeah, it's not electronic. It's uh, it's not. Crank. It's a hand crank. Um, yeah. I don't know. This is going to age me. Oh, gosh. So back in the day, my mom man uh was like the director of a weekday preschool uh at our church it was met like a three days a week or something like that and i remember going into the supply room and using this giant machine and feeding the paper in and having the the blocks these big they're rectangular blocks for each letter and they had a shelf on the wall for all the letters and shapes Mm. and you would pick the letter that you need you would put it in and then you would press and crank it, and it would p- cut that cardstock in that letter shape. And um, and this is kind of the same thing, but you crank it through um, the and feed it through, but it will cut your quilting shapes. Mm-hmm. And um, I used to love. I, I don't know. There's something satisfying of hearing the crunch of like the cardstock when you did the press. I don't know. It's kind of cool. I don't know why anybody would want to do this by hand. Um, well, but it is a, a big thing for a lot of quilters. Yeah, the store near me, um, they are big on the AccuQuilt. And it seems to be, I mean, it's one of those things also that, like, you can just bring it anywhere to, you know. And it's yeah. not, uh, it, it works in, the power goes out, you know. So it's very reliable. <laughs> <laughs> but you you can only cut from the kits that you have. Like, you have to buy those kind of all shape. the dyes yeah all the dyes right yeah, so exactly it, it's yeah. a lot to invest in but again you're not paying like a subscription yeah you know you're not so i mean i can see how it might be a good and if you're not tech savvy yeah and you don't want to be designing cut files and svgs and all of that uh and figuring all of that out then maybe that is the path especially if you're a quilter um i know it can also do like applique shapes and stuff too and designs within reason what they have available um but those those dies are not cheap no no they're not mm. but, i've never but you know i mean it. once you got it you got it so um it, there yeah, was, exactly yeah there was a the caesar romeo and the caesar juliet so the caesar is a brand of vinyl and they came mm-hmm. out with their own cutting machines not that long ago they have a 12 inch and a 24 inch. The 12 inch is the Juliet and the 24 inch is the Romeo. And their software is free with the machines and it's called the Leonardo Design Studio. I have not personally used these machines or their software, um, but I do love the Caesar vinyl. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, exactly. I do love their vinyl um, and I do love Starcraft's vinyl. Um, there are some of my favorite vinyls to use. Um, and my Starcraft heat press is like one of those big clamshell heat presses. They make really good heat presses. Mm-hmm. Um, so anyways, and then there's the last one that we looked up was a Janome Artistic Edge Cutter. Never heard and of it. And I had actually never heard of this. Yeah. So we started doing some research on the for this podcast. And I was like, I didn't know Janome had it. Anybody cutting. has it. You should it's <laughs> it's a 12 inch cutter 
Um, and it's really geared towards applique and quilting as well. I mean, a lot of the ones made by like brother, Janome, singer, obviously geared towards sewists because that's their main audience. Um, they also have like the embellishments, so you can like make the stencils for like the, the rhinestone embellishments. Um, and their software is free. Mm. Um, but yeah. It looks like there's um there's includes embroidery and applique designs. And you can do like one step applique. I'm just kind of reading this off their website. They have different cutting blades for fabric, paper, and templates. So those are kind of like the three materials that they really kind of focus on is fabric, paper, and template, which is like a stencil for the rhinestones. Um, which is a little different. So hmm. yeah. So that was another one that I had not actually really heard of that. I was like, Oh, I learned something new. I didn't know Janome. So if you have that one, share with us what you love about it or don't love about it. Leave a comment on our YouTube channel. If you have any of these machines or even one that we may not have mentioned, let us know. Um, let us know why you like it. You know, our, we have a lot of people that look at the comments of our, of mm -hmm. our weekly podcasts and it's a place where you can share your, um experience and maybe give some advice for someone who's looking to get a cutting machine um and and i think it's it would be important to hear from people who have all these different ones i have yeah. three of the brands listed right here on this list i have one and i don't even yeah. have full custody of it i share it <laughs> you share it with your neighbor don't you yeah yeah <laughs> um okay one. so let's let's talk about um real quick now that we've talked about machines there's accessories, obviously. Different brands carry different accessories, um, like tools for weeding vinyl or you know, tools for applying the material to the mats. Mats are an accessory. Mm -hmm. Heat presses are an accessory. Um, there's so many different ones out there. Just you need to, for what I, what I always tell people is like, well, which heat press should I get? And I'm like, get for what you're going to be doing. If you're going to do a lot of small projects. I, well, first of all, small projects are not, if you have the little mini heat press, like that's one of my most used presses. Mm. My other ones are tucked away. Out this of the way. My iron. I just, I use the mini heat press because you don't put water in it. So you don't have to worry about steam or anything. Oh. Um, and you really can't control the exact heat. Um, because with vinyl, you need to make sure you have the right heat. Um, oh. So you don't melt it, like burn it. Oh yeah. Um, yes. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I really tell people if you're pressing vinyl, uh, heat transfer vinyl, do not use an iron. You really oh. shouldn't. Um, <laughs> Ashley, uh, but, you know, here and there is one thing. Always use the steam off and make sure you really know how hot your iron is getting because they vary drastically, irons mm -hmm. do. Um, mm -hmm. But with the little mini heat press, like I use that a lot for like quick little projects or putting those names on bandanas. And it doesn't take up a lot of space at all on your countertop. Yeah. Um, it can also be great to use for like when I'm doing my foundation paper piecing. Oh, quick yeah. little press, yeah, like yeah. in between my... um my stitches. Yeah. It's, it's very handy. So Cricut has a mini heat press. Um, Singer came out with one as well. And I like singers cause it actually shows the temperature on it. Oh, does it? Uh, instead of just being one, two, three uh, on the Cricut one, it actually has the temperature amount and you can get really specific with the temperature. So I do like that. Um, yeah. But there's, there's so many different accessories and presses. There's big clamshell presses. Like I have, there's smart presses. There's ones that are just, you have to put push the pressure on yourself by leaning over it and those kind of things. There's so many different ones. Um, and you just need to figure out which one, like only invest in the ones that you know you're going to actually use. I think I yeah. have like the nine inch Cricut one. It, it just stays in the case. Oh, really? Underneath my, yeah, I, I couldn't tell you. It's been years since I've used it because <gasps> I have my big clamshell. Well, yeah, exactly. You know, so yeah, I do a lot of shirts, so I like the clamshell. I would never use that heat press if I had a clamshell. I mean, that's just, yeah. yeah. 
and it's so pretty i want to, to get a, a heat press but like the ironing board one you know for like putting on your interfacing people use that yes. for bag making a lot because yes. i don't know if you have as much problems with my with your interfacing but with the iron like you tend to like warp it and then like the yeah. fabric sometimes warps too and then you're just like wanting to just throw well, it well that's because it. with an iron instinctively you want to drag it yeah instead of just really press just... and lift and mm -hmm. press and lift i don't because and... i'm awesome so there's two different, like an iron, there's ironing back and forth, and then there's pressing up mm -hmm. and down. And instinctively with an iron, you want to roll it back and forth. And that's where you get the warping and the curling, the distortion. And um, so like Singer actually carries steam presses that are like garment steam presses. And mm -hmm. they have like three different sizes. And I have one, actually, I think I took it back to the office because I have no place to put it here. Yeah, it's but big. it was like the 26 inch and it's on a stand and it's got steam built in if you want to use it. It's a nice big clamp and you can just literally put your all your pieces there and clamp it shut. Yeah. Um, and it's got like the ironing board pad and all of that for sure. Um, I use my clamshell heat press for a lot of that stuff too, though, if I'm going to be doing a lot of it. Um, because I can adjust the pressure. It's got like a foam mat. So my material is still protected. Um, and it's got a built in timer and everything. So I really, yeah. I only like need one, it. right? <laughs> you would think, but I probably have one, two, three, four, five, five or six different heat presses. Jesus. And I, have, not. I have zero. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I just get, I've gotten them over the years. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I, yeah, haven't. So let's talk about cutting mats. So all of these different machines come with, like, require a cutting mat to put your material on to cut your material. Mm -hmm. Um, and one of the biggest questions that I get is how do I clean my mats and how do I make them last longer? Because they aren't going to last forever. They are going to need to be replaced. They're going to get worn out. But we want to help them last as long as possible. And so we want to help them maintain their tackiness. Mm -hmm. um, but when you put things like a fibrous fabric on it, it's going to become less tacky because those fibers are going to stick to it or the paper is going to stick to it from or so, the paper backing from your vinyl is going to stick to it. Um, right. So my tips for cleaning your mats, and this is for anyone who already has them or just note to self if you decide to get a cutting machine is use water-based baby wipes, not aloe, not lotion, nothing like that. Water-based, alcohol-free, like baby wipes. And you want to wipe down the mat really well. You do not want to use a scraper because a scraper, while it will remove the paper or the strings from the fabric, it will also remove the stickiness. Right. It will literally scrape it right off. Um, so you just want to baby wipe it off. It'll feel nice and wet and kind of smooth. It won't feel sticky, but you lay it flat and let it air dry. And when it dries, the stickiness is right back there. And then the other thing is you want to make sure when you're not using your mats that you put that clear sheet back on top to protect it from dust and lint and fuzz so that it stays sticky for the next time you use it. And then either lay them flat somewhere or hang them. I hang mine. Me too. I have like command hooks on the side of my island that you probably never see in my, my videos, but my big cutting island, I have command hooks on either end and I have mats hanging from both sides. Mm -hmm. um, and that's where I, I hang mine. Yeah, for that's, sure. That's the best way, I think. Yeah, you don't want them to curl because then they're not going to feed through the cutting machine evenly and they're not going to cut very well. So you want right. to make sure they're either laid completely flat or hang them. And I find that hanging them takes up less space. Mm hmm. So anyways, <sighs> um, and the other side of that is I would also make sure that you are updating your software every time it says to update. Cricket mm -hmm. will force you to update so you don't have to worry about that. Like you can't um, use this until until like, every time I open Cricket Design Space, it's like you need to update. I'm like, really? Uh, um, mm -hmm. And then just make sure that you keep your machines like covered and dust free as best you can. If you do leave them like on a shelf, like I do, I do dust them. Every time I go through and clean my room, I do dust them. And before I use them, I'll make sure they're dust free. Mm -hmm. um, because you don't want that getting just like your sewing machine. You just want to take care of them. They've got a motor. Well, you know the deal. Um, and I think what I'm most excited about with cutting machines is just the future of it, right? Like mm -hmm. the technology, they're getting better. I will say 
the and this is this is not because I work for the company, but the Singer Momentum fabric cutting is the best I've ever used. Oh, really? It is so good. It's quiet, mm -hmm. it's a really quiet machine. It's very quick. It's very precise. It's a smart rotary blade, meaning it's got a little computer chip and it plugs into the machine differently than the other rotary blades. And it is, it is good. Mm. If you did not see my demonstrations on HSN, I highly recommend going to their YouTube channel and searching and watching it. If you want to see a demonstration of that machine, I know it's a big machine, but you can do all sorts of things with it. And the fabric cutting is where they spent a, a really time. long segment because your segments weren't super long and i yeah, could have watched you make projects all day <laughs> <laughs> I, I could have i had yeah. <laughs> so many fun things to cut um and i i think one thing that's really important about that demonstration is i wasn't cutting like super detailed things but i was cutting a lot of different types of material mm -hmm. and they all cut perfectly yeah. every single time and so i have to say like it's it's a really good cutting machine and I'm very critical of cutting machines because I've been using them for so many years and I've helped launch other ones like the Starcraft Solo. So it's just, yeah. Do I, do I think there's always room for improvement, right? I, the software, the, that's an easy, like as they grow the software and they add more features, you know, but the machine itself, if it's a solid machine, you can't really like do a lot of changes when, when the machine, once it launches, mm -hmm. right? It is what it is. But the machine itself is solid and the software will continue to grow with the, with it, you know, and, and be able to do more. But I mean, it can print and cut. It can do paper. It can do vinyls. It can do, I mean, I was cutting like cork. Cork is like a really popular material for like jewelry making and for bag making. Mm -hmm. um, so Imagine if I was willing that. to cut it on live TV, you know it's good. <laughs> like you can imagine the like for a two foot by two foot cutting mat, like just like party decor, like just the things that you can make yeah. that are so big. Did like, you see the I flower that I had on the demonstration? Oh, yeah. And I it's made all, those by hand. So, it's all cardstock. It yeah. And it was all cut on the twenty four inch by twenty four inch mat. They're and huge. then just piece together. And it was, it's huge. It's mm -hmm. a two foot <laughs> circumferenced flower. And it yeah. was like. I made those for when beautiful. I was doing photography and I made like this beautiful like backdrop with these big, yeah. huge flowers and like different, I use like an ombre pink, like cardstock. And so each, yeah. you know, had all dimension and stuff. Mm -hmm. and I had those flowers laying around my house forever. They were so big. They were <laughs> heavy too. So they didn't like to stay on the wall. <laughs> Oh, see, this one wasn't heavy at all. The one that I had at the show. I probably had really um, thick cardstock. You probably did. <laughs> yeah, this was just like regular cardstock. Like it wasn't anything fancy. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, no, I mean, it really shows like this, the size of the projects. Like the the doormat that we had is like that you can make your own doormats. And that's a mm. stencil. And the fact that you can make the whole stencil in one cut and on one pass is awesome because then you don't have to like try to make a bunch of little stencils and piece them together on and then hope you get clean lines when you paint to the through the stencil onto the mat and so i actually think i have some blank doormats up in my attic that i got from ikea like so many years ago and i never did them but i think mm. i may make some doormats for my front porch because i i need some new ones mm -hmm. so you know stencil stencil material is great or, or the cheap vinyl um the cheap adhesive vinyl that you're never going to use that's a great material to use for stencils for those yeah so for sure. um lots of fun projects that you can make with these i hope you've enjoyed our little chat about cutting machines i know it's it kind of gets technical with the differences between the machines and the software so if you have any questions or if you're in the market for a cutting machine and you're not sure which one's the right fit for you don't hesitate to reach out to me uh, instagram is the best way with a dm um or you can dm the social hour as well over on instagram um because just like sewing machines, this is an area that I've been in for many, many, many years. And sometimes it's like, I don't know the difference between this one and this one and this one. And this is all I, if you just know what you want to do with it, then I can kind of point you in the right direction. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, you can decide based on features and budget, which is the right path mm -hmm. for you. And then once you pick one, there are so many resources online for all of these. Oh, right. Yeah. So there's a ton of resources. Um, I used to make tutorial videos on like long time ago on like cricket. 
I, design, I design was going to, but then I stopped. I did. I really got into like the, like all the elements of design space. But. Mm, see, I just like, I really didn't feel like learning the software. And that's the thing is that if you already know like Illustrator, you don't have to learn the software that much. You just need to know how to navigate it so that you can cut out your pieces. Um, mm -hmm. So like over the years, I have been you know, on this journey with Cricut. But at this point, um, if I need to cut out anything, I design it myself, I just import it. And then um, that's it. So but my friend who has, you know, the same, like we share the machine, mm -hmm. she, uh, she's the one who actually like goes and like researches this stuff and knows how to do all the different layers. I'm like, just like I don't know. <laughs> I see. I, I know. I know design space like the back of my hand. Yeah. And so I've too, been I don't know. Okay. I've been a part of the design space like since it first came out and was web based. That's a gypsy. Did you have the gypsy? I don't think so. <gasps> Which one's the, the gypsy, gypsy? Was the handheld device that you plugged into your Cricut Expression so that you could design on the go? Yeah, no. Yeah, I did I not know. have that. <sighs> oh my goodness! Are it you was ready a for failed us? project product. Oh. It, it, uh, they discontinued it. Yeah, it had that's a too funny. Yeah. Oh I my know. gosh. It was show, like, like a palm people. pilot for your cutting machine. It was not <laughs> good, but I was just like, I had to get it. Again, it it's good. just part of the evolution of the process of how we've gotten here, right? Yeah, you, exactly. you don't know. They tried yeah. and it failed and then yeah. made think, it better for something different. But it was before tablets and stuff, right? So that yeah. was the idea was like, you could do it, you could design while you're on an airplane. <laughs> and then when you get home, you can plug it in and cut it out. And I'm like, oh, that's never going to happen. <laughs> you ready for our selling confession of the week yes all right this week's sewing confession is i once convinced my spouse that investing in a top of the line sewing machine would save us money in the long run because i could make all our clothes instead of buying them Little did he know that I'd end up spending more money on fabric and accessories than we ever did on store-bought clothes. Oops. <laughs> yeah. Oops. <laughs> I love that you were able to convince him. It makes or sense. Kudos. It yeah. makes sense on paper or in theory, I guess I should say. But in reality, a hobby is very rarely cheaper than, you know, any hobby. Yeah. Any sure. hobby sewing crafting it's all an investment and it's about about the experience not yeah. just the end result it's the joy you see your children yeah. happy mommy made something daddy made something it's just like it's all yeah. about that rather than like uh we're trying to save money because clothes are so expensive mm -hmm. if anything i would be more like i don't want to buy that crap in the store <laughs> i want to make better quality stuff that's going to last yeah. longer that's yeah. my opinion on that i agree fast fashion all right guys if you have a sewing confession be sure to leave it over on our website they're anonymous as always and until then we'll see you next week bye, bye.